Uh, personally, I think that without psychedelics, our situation would be hopeless. You know, there's certain kinds of healing, um, certain awakenings that really, <clears throat> I mean, yeah, they can happen other ways, but this seems like a pretty important way. Uh, I, 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 there's a saying that I <clears throat> have explored way, way back in some of my early writing called, I, 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 I said, the illness seeks the medicine. When there is a condition um, of, of disharmony, of, of lack, of, that requires healing, like that condition summons or magnetizes the medicine to it. You could also say the medicine seeks the illness. So it is not coincidence that psychedelics have presented themselves to us at this time. They're here in response to a need and also to a readiness. And that's true, even though many of them have existed for thousands of years. From the perspective of modern civilization, they may as well not have existed. They were, they were kept in the outer precincts of reality as you know, anthropological curiosities or as completely unknown um, in, until the last century, when they began to filter in, you know, from the indigenous cultures where they had been kept, or also from, you know, the wherever inventions come from, like, like to you know, name LSD again, like it came from somewhere, you know, and it came because the time was right for it to come. I, I, I see that, the, that these, uh, and, and, you know, many people experience this on psychedelics, that these beings, they are beings. They have a consciousness. They're not just a chemical. Uh, and we can develop a relationship with them. And they are um, beneficent beings. They are generous beings. They are here to help. They have a purpose as well, that just like you and I, they want to fulfill that purpose. So they're, they're friendly, you know, which isn't to say that they're not also dangerous. <clears throat> they can be misused. Uh, we have to learn, in some cases, how to use them. They're also quite forgiving, you know, like for all the talk of, uh, <clears throat> of, you know, the disparaging of recreational use and so forth. I mean, my experience, my life-changing experience was an example of recreational use. I didn't know anything about set and setting and all that kind of stuff. And there was no, no, you know, sitter with me, you know, serving the medicine and no ceremony around it, nothing like that. But, you know, it still, the medicine knew what it was doing. So they are, so, you know, I, I, to, to be more specific about what attracts them to this moment, the, the developmental pattern of, you know, being in a world, in a story, in a relationship, et cetera, et cetera. And I'll call it like a world story in a mythology, in a reality that is perfectly accommodating of our growth, of self-discovery, of all kinds of development. But at some point you approach its limits and you sense that there's something outside of it, but you are incapable of finding it because all of the ways that you are looking, it's like in the Matrix movie, like no matter how diligently Neo searches for the answer, what is the Matrix? Everything, all of his searches are still happening in the Matrix. He cannot get out of it because he is fully contained in the Matrix. Ultimately, the only way he gets out of it uh, when he takes the red pill is because his desperate search has attracted the attention of Morpheus, who then gives him the red pill. And then he is broken out of the matrix. It was not his, his own finding that did it. It was his search that attracted that which he was looking for, that came in a form far beyond what he could even have imagined. So you could look at that, that the matrix movie as you know kind of um, an allegory for the uh, yearning of the soul to break the confines of the world that it has created or has descended into for a very good purpose. But now 
like that purpose is complete and it's time to enter into a larger world. So that is the call of the soul that psychedelics are attracted to in broad terms. And then we could talk specifically about the various ones, but but that's what they do. You know, they they destroy in, in the most powerful ones, you know, in the right circumstances, they really unravel who you thought you were, what you thought was real. Like, and, and that's, if we don't have that shown to us somehow, we're not going to find it. That's a different part of the journey. The, the, part, the part of the journey of exploring the world that we are immersed in and have the two, like that's a different part of the journey. That's fine. But right now, I mean, just looking on a planetary scale, the story that we've been living in is actually leading to, you know, horrific ecological destruction and potentially the death of the planet. Like we're, and, and if that's the only way that consciousness can escape its current confines, then that's what it will do.